But I think that the biggest issue that I find is that people try and break the system. Like you might go and buy a course, whether it's this course or it's a course on traffic generation, the SEO method, and people think, I know the system better than the system actually is. So if you're buying a system, follow the system and implement it yourself a few times before you try and break it. So many people I see go and they buy a course and then get a third of the way through and go, I know better than the person I just spent two grand with and I'm going to do my own thing. Just if you follow the system, you can learn the skill and that's what you've got to try and drill into your outsources is that you don't know better than the system, the system knows better than you. I need to add something to that as well. On the, on the flip side as well, I'm a big believer when you purchase systems that it's also important to make it your own because it's all too easy to purchase a system and then if you haven't tweaked it and made it your own, if it doesn't work or you don't get the result instantaneously, it's too easy for you to go, it's the system's fault, not my fault. And it's very easy to disown the problem uh, because it's the system's fault, not necessarily you. So I always say, if you're going to buy something, make some minor tweaks out of the box, but you need to understand the system to be able to make those tweaks, otherwise you could just completely sabotage the system, but making those minor tweaks can be, it can be helpful. So there's two ways to do everything. Pete, just with the, um, the system you've got, obviously it's essentially a trickle effect where you put something at the top and stuff all flows through. Absolutely. Do you have, um, the only, as I was sitting there thinking, I'm thinking, do you have the problem where, like for example, you've got to put something in a Dropbox and someone else has got to do it. They're essentially got to be consistently looking back in at, at that folder to see if something new has popped up. Yep. Do, you have the, do you have it nicely set up in particular what tool to use and is it just email, where when person A finishes something, that they obviously notify all the other people that need to flow on from them and specifically if it's just email, the problem is that you, know, you don't necessarily have transparency into that. Do you have anything slicker than email? Or? I, I still keep that old school approach to an email back and forth and if you have the project managers, they can sort of yeah, forward it through. That's, that's the key. It's having a project manager who monitors that. You can easily get techie with it if you want and have sort of RSS feeds happening. So an RSS feed monitors a certain things. So when something happens here, the RSS feed pushes it over here and it appears in the Google alerts or your, your Google reader kind of thing. So you can definitely get that sort of stuff. And there's definitely some software online. Um, well, actually, let me rephrase that. There would be definitely some software online. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would sort of have that where this, you, you have one person do this and then it notifies people over here. Like in our office, we are have a lot of these systems in our telco company. Um, for obviously when someone buys a, phone, a you know, 20 grand phone system, some serious things have to happen to make sure we deliver that. And we've got, I spent a lot of time doing some, some bespoke software in house that when someone does one part of the job and ticks a box, then alerts happen in other people's inboxes. Um, that's very bespoke in our telco business, but this is the same method. Online you can just have an email here, or you have your, your, your Google Docs account, that when someone actually ticks this box in, in, in a particular Google Doc, Folder, everyone looks at the same Google Doc um, workflow. So as soon as someone's updated this bit, then someone knows that, okay, I've got to take the next step. It can be simple as an Excel spreadsheet where you have, you know, columns. Each project gets a line. You know, step one, two, three, four. Everyone looks at this. So as soon as someone does this, the person knows to go and oh, I'm in charge of step two. So anytime there's a step one without a step two tick next to it, I've got to do that. It can be very, you know, analog like that. And I think another thing is, um, I know you, you, you wouldn't do it particularly, but so many people sort of try and get all this automated stuff happening too soon. Yeah. It's about getting the actual result first and tweaking efficiency later. I want to get effective with my outsources first. So everything I try and focus on is get the effective outcome right. If you're going to do it slow, that's fine. Do it slow in terms of writing an article. But write the article properly. In terms of the system, make sure the system's effective and then work on processes to make it more efficient, such as tweaking sort of the communication system as opposed to an email. But it's all about effective results first, efficiency second. Something else you can tweet out. Effectiveness first, efficiency second.